Hey, it's Chessie from Squeegee Inc. and welcome back to Printer's Corner. This is where I answer the week's questions all about garment decoration. If you'd like your question answered like this, you can use the hashtag Printer's Corner and I'll pick those up for a future episode. This week's episode is all about adding strokes to your artwork layers when printing multicolour designs, which ink to choose for live printing events, and what type of prints to offer customers when you're first starting out. Make sure to stick around to the end of the episode to see the results from this week's community poll. The first question is from Tennessee Apparel and they said, Hello, I have my first live printing event coming up. I have both Plasol and water-based inks, but don't know which is better to use for the public. This is a question I ask myself frequently too, and due to the ease of bringing a small press and just a heat press, my answer is going to be water-based ink. If the public are doing the printing with you, then water-based inks can be washed off their hands a little bit more easily and they're a bit more child-friendly. You can also cure them with the heat press and you don't need to worry about the safety of using a flash dryer with members of the public. I personally choose the water-based method as my conveyor dryer and my flash dryer need like special electric supply. They're not just a normal plug. And it would also be really difficult to transport those really big items unless you had like two or three people. Whereas I can carry a small press and a heat press by myself to the event. I try to provide light coloured garments as well when I'm doing the live events so that the ink show up well and I don't need to demonstrate under bases and multicoloured prints. So for example, just have some black ink or a couple of dark colours, some light t-shirts and then you're good to go. Uh, another cool addition that I've been adding to my live printing is to have um, ultra colour neck transfers cut up and ready because I can use the same heat press to apply the neck labels and people really like this extra touch and it looks like a proper shirt and um, we just put like Blind Maggot or something which is our t-shirt brand in the neck and it makes them feel like they've produced like a real retail ready t-shirt and they it goes down really well our second question is from bella millie 444 and they said thanks for all the videos when i make up my layers i don't know how to break them down how much stroke should i add to the layers in my designs i would say i try to do the least amount possible i have designs where i couldn't even have any overlap at all and what, what we're talking about is when you have a design and you add an extra stroke around the edge so that you've got more leeway to line up your designs. Sometimes, like recently I had a design and it had lots of texture in one of the layers. So if I'd have put a stroke on that, all of the texture would have just been eaten up by the stroke and you wouldn't be able to see it. It would just look like a big blob. So I wasn't actually allowed any stroke at all on that one. But if you try and add a one point stroke, then all the details can get eaten up. So I would say anything over a one point stroke is becoming noticeable and may change the design a little bit too much. I would say I typically use a 0.5 stroke. Um, that's on Illustrator and when I'm talking about vectors and things. This allows me to register the print without the risk of layers having gaps between them and seeing the t-shirt color. Um, there's also this other thing that I've been doing a lot of, which is a good way to see the impact of the stroke weight that you've used on the design is to use something like Accurip. Um, Accurip have this layer when you're doing the separations and you can have, you've got all the different colors that you're dealing with and all the different layers. And then you can basically change the stroke width that it's applying to each of the layers. But it also gives you this preview window right here so you can see like if I add two point stroke on here, um, that's, that's way too much. It's coming through, it's overlapping everything. It looks horrible. And then you can dial it back until it's not quite noticeable enough, but it's still useful for when you're printing and registering your designs. The last question is from JTJK99. And they said, I have not done a customer job before. What should my first job be? And what ink should I use? 
looking to start doing local jobs first and then more complex ones, but I only have a single arm press at the moment. Uh, I think if I had a single arm press, I would use Plastisol. That would be my short answer. Water-based printing seems like the easiest thing to use because the cleanup is simpler. However, water-based ink is thinner, can dry on the screen, and sometimes you can't get a vivid print. And if you're a DIY printer, you might not be curing the ink properly, so it might actually start to fade a little bit um, because you're not allowing the pigment to bind to the fabric and heating it up enough and all of that type of thing. Water-based screen printing should really be thought of as a premium option because of the technicalities of making the print last for a long time. Therefore, if I was a beginner with a single arm press, I would choose plus or link because it's a little bit more foolproof. You keep the ink on the screen when you're printing plus sole like indefinitely, um, so you, you've got a little bit more time to do your printing. You can also have the option to print on light and dark garments more easily because the ink is less transparent and it also sits on the surface of the fabric so it's more opaque and you can get more vivid colours with less layers. This means you'll be able to do more common jobs that come through. So a lot of those um, local jobs are workwear and m a lot of jobs that we get given like that are actually white ink onto dark garments. So you're gonna have an easier time printing with Plastol ink for those kind of jobs. Something else you can think about when you're offering screen printing as like a service for the first time and you've only got a single arm press is to try and like tell the customer that they don't have to just print print and choose black shirts. They can actually have like lots of different colored shirts and lots of different colored inks. And that'll kind of show that you've got more versatility and they might go for different ink colors and things. And you might be able to just do things like color changes, which you can charge for when you're starting out. It's now time to see the results from this week's community poll. Community poll. The question this week was, how much stroke, or trapping as some people say, do you add to overlapping layers in multicolored designs? The options were none, 0.5 PT, 1 PT, or more. The most common answer by far was 0.5. The main question from this week's episode was, how much stroke do you add to your layers in your artwork for multicolored designs? And my answer is 0.5 PT, which is expected as it gives just enough lenience without being too noticeable when you actually come to print it. Let us know in the comments if you agree with that, if you think that's too much, too little, or it's not really gonna help your registering at all. Also make sure to answer this week's question in the community tab on the Squeegee and Ink YouTube channel. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Printer's Corner. Make sure to subscribe and if you hit the bell, you get notified of next week's episode as soon as it comes out. You can use hashtag Printer's Corner to give me more questions to answer in a future episode and I hope you have a great week printing.